We're excited. We've talked about trying to do it for many years, but we always felt that, oh, we're getting a little too old to do that. We are old. Yes. That's why we're glad Kevin is doing it. Kevin will do a marvelous job. He's a good operator. Mm -hmm. Well, we heard it a couple of weeks ago that we knew he was looking for something. So we we thought, oh, maybe we can help him with it. Uh, so we've been doing a little bit, but uh, I looked at a few properties that we thought might be possible, but uh, they weren't really good. And so most of it he's done on his own and he's been in contact with his son, Pat, and they've been talking about things too. So it's, uh, we're excited because it really hurt when Dairy Queen closed. After 53 years of him working I started when I was Queen. 16, I was the youngest operator in the, in the country. And then to have it just ripped away, uh, the way it happened was very, very sad. So when you, uh, when you first started, where were you working? I mean, where was the store? On North Main Street, across from what is now uh, Raisin Pan. That was uh, Parkway Drive-In. Now there's a big retention pond there. Well, it was a two-window walk-up, and we had four products. We had cones, sundaes, shakes and malts, and a banana split. And it was only open three or three and a half or four months a year, just during the summer. And whenever the Dairy Queen opened, everybody knew, oh, spring was right around the corner. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, there was no drive-in, not drive-through window or anything. Uh, back then, Dilly Buyers sold for a dime, 11 for a dollar. Now they're about 10 for a six, $10 for a six pack. I like the nickel cones. Yeah. I remember selling those and that wasn't just for kids. That was a lot of adults bought that. Yeah. And we started before sales tax came in. And this one family of three children and a mother and father would each come in. They'd buy five dime cones, 50 cents. Well, when sales tax came in, it would have been 52 cents. So the dad gave each one their own dime and they came up and ordered one cone at a time so they didn't have to pay any sales tax. Not a big deal. It started at 12 <laughs> cents, so. So those are a lot of things you remember about it in the good old days. Oh, we had so many great employees over the years. And you can't ever do anything alone, Judy. You have to have good people. Mm -hmm. So God bless all those people and thank you, everybody. Somebody made you a list though? Well, yes, yeah, so our secretary typed up a list of all the employees we had and it's about 1,500 employees throughout all the stores that we operated here and in the Milwaukee area too, so. And a lot of them we still see once in a while. I shouldn't say a lot of them, but some of them. Yeah, I was at a funeral and I went to give my condolences to the man, his wife had died and his daughter was there and she said, oh, I used to work for you. And others have done that, I had one, Fella, he said uh, his niece used to work for us, and he gave me her name, and I looked it up, and I still had her work permit from the 1970s, so I mailed it to her. But there's people right around town, so many of them, uh, Pam Imicus. Rita Schmidt. And Rita Schmidt, and Rita Zapersky. She was a real big favorite of ours because she, I had her in fourth grade, and then, I taught her in fourth grade, and then she came to work for us after a while. And then the final part of the story is she became our personal banker. At BMO. At BMO. She went on. We always hope they go on for bigger and better things, and many, many of them did. Mm -hmm. Everybody did. So since you've been working with Kevin a little bit, what do you know? Give us the timeline on this uh, development. Do you know anything? Well, if if everything works out, he'd like he would like to have the building done before a year is up. And the thing is, they'd have to tear down the existing building. And uh, so Dairy Queen has been sending some people down to look it over and see what could happen. And there's engineering things to be done because that's kind of an odd shaped lot. It drops off a lot in the back. So I'm not sure I haven't seen any drawings or anything yet. And Kevin's on vacation right now this week, so I haven't had a chance to talk to him. But when he gets back next week, he and I will have a little discussion. So can uh, Dairy Queen succeed now with all the other things? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because Kevin is a good operator, and that's what it takes, is a good operator to keep their, what would you say, their nose to the grindstone 
and he's had good experience with his Kiwaskum and Jackson Street uh, Jackson stores. So we're proud of him, and we know he'll do well. So we've known him since he was in high school. Oh well, he used to live north of Park at, uh, north of Regner Park, and he was working for us at the West Side store. And this was when he was in high school. And when Nancy Hofferman, the manager, would need somebody to come in and work, she'd give him a call, and he'd literally run to the Dairy Queen. He wouldn't ride a bike or drive. He'd run all the way from Regner Park to the West Side. And that's about a mile or more than that. He was like 16 or 17. Yeah. But wonderful.